guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to talk to you guys today about this book. Most of you probably have already read it, just as I have, and probably couldn't wait to get your hands on it, just as I had. But for anybody that hasn't read it yet, or even if you have, I hope that you'll stick around and you will hear what I thought about it. I'm trying to come up with like a new intro and outro that doesn't just sound like every other YouTuber that I watch. Still working on that, but I am so excited to talk to you guys today about this book. Um, I feel like I always say, um, I know there's probably a lot of different type of people that come to my channel, but I feel like each of you have a little bit of me somewhere in you and or you wouldn't watch my videos like that. I feel like we relate probably on some sort of level. So certain things that speak to me or that I get excited about, I want to share with you guys because I feel like you guys would probably too. So this is one of those things. Um, I wrote down a few notes just because I want to make sure that I get through everything and that I don't leave any important things out that I did want to touch on in this video. You may from time to time um, hear me specifically quote or even paraphrase certain things that I've heard her say. Um, I'm going to read some stuff right from the book and some stuff that I've just absorbed from listening to her between reading her book which you guys also can download on audio if you prefer to hear her read the book to you. And uh, between her book, her podcast, and her live Instagram stories that she does, I get super, super inspired by all of her words. And some of them have just stuck with me. The thing that I do say today is still going to be a vast understatement to the knowledge and the wisdom that is in this book that you will not achieve unless you read it for yourself. Rachel says it in her podcast um, that she sincerely believes that there are tools in it that will help change your life and I stand behind that 100%. I mean I feel like I'm literally walking and talking proof of that. This book really has transformed a lot of my habitual thinking habits and I feel like it really really showed up during a time that I needed it the most. It was sort of a time too where I felt like I was having all of these thoughts myself but then kind of sort of feeling a little lost or alone in that journey and her, not just her book, I mean really any of her speaking engagements. I know she's probably not for everyone, but somebody is for everyone and she is definitely my person when it comes to speaking the language that I need to hear and kind of being that baseline for all the things that I look for in a mentor, um, whether it's a virtual mentor or, you know, seeing a therapist, or a friend, or just somebody that gets you, and somebody that's willing to talk about their experiences in a way that makes you realize something that you know already, and that everyone knows, and I think everyone is afraid to acknowledge, is that real people are not perfect, and perfect people are not real and it's refreshing and it's at the same time very knowledgeable. A lot of these concepts are not necessarily new material but it's definitely something that I am approaching in a new way. It has really solidified and brought to light a lot of things that I battle with from a psychological standpoint. This book really taught me and inspired me to really lean into the idea and lean into your truth and to just stop standing in my own way or stop standing in your own way um, of creating the life that you want. With any of these books that I'm reading and the list of books that I plan to want to read in the near future, it's all with this thirst inside of me that I can physically feel for growth and for 
healthy development and healthy personal growth. I knew how I wanted to show up for my life and what that looked like for me and what the best version of myself would look like. But I really wasn't actually doing much to get there. She says this all the time and it is so true. You have the time, you just spend it doing something else. And that is so true guys. I don't need to tell you what it is in your, in your own life and how that applies, but if there's anything that you have been putting off or any life that you picture for yourself or routine that you want to adapt or mindset that you want to have that you see other people having, you can have that. You just have to want it enough for yourself. And like I said, I physically felt like I got to a point where it was like, this, it's either this or die. Not like suicidal die, but like, I felt like I wasn't living my life for me in a lot of ways. Not that I'm not grateful for the things in my life and the people in my life, but I knew that I had a lot of work to do. And I knew that I was holding back a lot of things and that I just wasn't giving it all that I could. And I find it so crazy, especially in this day and age, that we have the tools for free on the internet. We have the tools, we have tangible tools and advice. It's waiting for you to decide what you want to do with it. But until you decide, and until you actually start pursuing that lifestyle actively, not much is going to change. So until you make that choice and until I made that choice for myself, none of that stuff was going to matter. I can honestly say from the most simple things in someone's day to the most highest commitments and goals and promises, no matter how small or how big they are, I had a really hard time keeping to myself. I am what somebody, what Dave Hollis would call a negotiator. Um, and I always felt like part of me, I don't know, almost like I didn't matter enough. That I could never stand firm in what I wanted and I kind of just took a backseat on my life and my thoughts. So once I started pursuing this truth and learning and understanding and applying the scientific notion that energy is something that you make, literally, listen to that. Energy is something that you make. And once you start really listening to that and embracing that, um, it'll change your whole world. If that is what you are striving for, you know, and if you are on a similar path that I am, this book is going to help you see a lot of those things. And I hope this is recording. <laughs> I had to ask myself if I was going to continue to live this life of good enough over the possibility of greatness. Good enough just didn't sit well with me. And it's kind of like, when you know better, you do better, right? And so I was slowly starting to see all of these things that I just kind of always had the willingness to learn, but I just was standing in my own way. Um, and so I had been doing that for so long. And it wasn't working. I mean, it doesn't end well. So it wasn't working out for me. And I think a really big part, there's a lot. And we're back. Sorry, where was I? Um, I think I was talking about my anxiety and depression. So I think a big part of my anxiety and depression, there's a lot of other factors to it, but I think a big part came from this place of 
settling for a mediocre version of myself. I mean, it's easier to do all of those things that you've already been doing because it's what you know. Even if what you know is suffering and negative thoughts, it is easier because it's what you know. And it's easier until it's not. Until you choose to start when your why becomes greater than your excuse not to. For me, my why was so that I can have a better relationship with myself. And when I start being that person that I want to be for myself and stop waiting for someone else to give me permission, when I started getting real with who I am and where I'm going and deciding to take massive action to get there. Because again, I'm going to quote Rachel Hollis, hope is not a strategy. It's not. Hope is not a strategy. And when I started to become a better version of myself, I also started to be a better friend, a better sister, a better fiance, a better mom, a better future mom, a better daughter, a better everything. The trickle effect for that is just unreal. It's so rewarding. Having an exceptional life is hard. It takes work. And I'm, I'm still walking through this, but I can see that it is slowly becoming a more natural state to live in. And that is what all this is for, and that is what my intent is, and it just, it's, it's awesome to see it um, manifest, and just, it's a good feeling. So, um, I do want to take a second and just read a quote from the book, but what is the alternative? We live through something crappy, and that's it? We're done for? We allow all the hard, ugliest parts of our lives to color everything else. You cannot ignore your pain. You cannot ever leave it behind completely. The only thing you can do is find a way to embrace the good that came out of it, even if it takes you years to discover what that is. Losing my brother was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life, but it does not define my life. You can live through something that rocks your world off its axis. You can survive losing a piece of your heart without losing the core of who you are. More than merely surviving the loss, you can thrive. You can do it because it's what you deserve. More importantly, you can survive the loss because living is the greatest honor you can give to the person you lost even if the person who's gone was your younger, more innocent self. The path through hardship or extreme trauma is one of the most difficult things a being can encounter. But make no mistake, the only way is to fight through it. Pain and trauma are a violent whirlpool, and they will drag you under if you don't battle to stay afloat. There will be times, especially in the beginning, when it will take everything within you to keep your head above those waves. But you must keep your head above the waves. It's so difficult, but you are tough, even if you don't feel it at the time. The very fact that you're still breathing in and out means you're fighting back against the tide that wants to sweep you away. Don't let it. After a while, I promise, it will become easier to tread water. And finally, you'll learn to swim against the current. The friction you'll face will build your muscles, bones, and sinew. The very fabric of your being will be shaped by this journey. The toughest one you've taken, surely, but you will become something greater because of it. You have to. Otherwise, what was the point? I used to naively say that everything happens for a reason. But that was only because I hadn't yet lived through something horrific enough to bring that statement into question. I don't believe everything happens for a specific reason, but I do believe it's possible to find purpose 
even in the absence of explanation. So the whole book centers around each chapter starting out with a lie that we tell ourselves. This narrative, this way of thinking, and then realizing the truth of it and changing the thought process of self-sabotaging and, and believing those lies and thinking that there's no other way to think about it. And what I really like about Rachel in the style of her writing and in how she speaks is she gives tangible advice. You know, it's not just some fancy quote on Pinterest and then you're like, okay, well, you know, real people are not perfect and perfect people are not real. And this perception that we have to be that way or that that is the journey to being successful and being happy is just, it's so far out of reach of what we all really want out of life. And there's a way to be happy, like genuinely happy with your life and your choices and that it's possible and that it's something worth pursuing. That's really all that I had to include in this. Um, if you guys liked what I had to say, then you are going to absolutely love this book. So I've been thinking about this a lot. I want to try this new thing for my outro during our day. Um, when you see, when you haven't seen somebody for a long time or like a coworker or something, you know, when you see them, there's always that initial, hey, how are you doing? Or how are you? Most of the time you're going to respond with, good, how are you? That's what we do. That's what we all do. And that's great. If you're good, that is, that's awesome. Then say that, you know, but that's not always true. And I feel like I want to break the habit of just asking, how are you doing? But not really asking, how are you doing? Do you know what I mean? It's just, um, it's just fluff, I feel like. So when someone asks me how I'm doing, I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, but when someone asks you how you're doing, have you ever really responded with anything other than good? Like they are so taken back from that. So it's just like the act in asking is just out of habit, but it doesn't ever go anywhere. I mean, if it's like your husband or your mom or something, maybe you'll dive in you know, and talk about it. So I want to try this new thing where I want to know how you guys are doing. Like, really, how are you doing? If you're doing good, I want to hear about it. Leave that in the comments below. If you're not, I want to hear about it. I genuinely want to hear about it. So how are you doing? Like, I know we get asked that all the time, but like, really, how are you doing? If you guys are new to my channel, um, I hope that you stick around. I just celebrated my one year here on YouTube. I'm really happy to have you. So if you do like this video, I hope that you guys will subscribe and like this video if you do. You get to decide right now, today, that life is either happening to you or life is happening for you. You did not come this far to only come this far. Or something more. You have a spark, a little dream. <laughs>